Hello, I am Noah Humiter. Togaville Obstetrics page 15 There is a diagram representing fetal circulation and we will be going through this today. The concept behind fetal circulation is to appreciate the fact that source of oxygenated blood is not the lung. The lungs are actually collapsed, so are the pulmonary vessels, causing the pressure to rise, and since pressure is inversely related to vessel diameter, and also to blood volume. The blood volume going to fetal lungs has to decrease to be accommodated in the small pulmonary vessels. Thus, blood from the right side of the heart should thus be shunted directly to the left side, bypassing the lung. Shunting from the right side of the circulation to the left side occurs at two points. Through the foramen ovale, and at a more distal point, through the ductus arteriosus, second concept is that blood from the umbilical vein, carrying nutrients, has to pass first through the portal circulation into the liver, so the umbilical vein joins the portal sinus, this also ensures the liver is well oxygenated, however blood leaving the liver, to join inferior vena cava has less oxygen content than the umbilical vein. To increase oxygen content in the inferior vena cava, a smaller continuation of the umbilical vein joins the inferior vena cava directly. This is the ductus venosus. Notice that blood in the right ventricle is 15% less oxygenated than blood in the left ventricle. The left ventricle mainly receives blood that is shunted from foramen ovale to the left atrium. The source of this blood is from the medial side of the inferior vena cava, this is mainly blood from the ductus venosus. The highly oxygenated blood of ductus venosus is shunted from foramen ovale to the left atrium, by preferential flow of crista dividens, this blood is then pumped from the left ventricle to the ascending aorta and supplies the heart and brain, and thus ensures that the brain and heart receive well oxygenated blood. The right ventricle receives blood from the lateral part of the inferior vena cava, that is blood from the hepatic veins, lower body and superior vena cava, and this is the blood that passes through tricuspid valve to the right ventricle, to the pulmonary artery. Then is shunted from the pulmonary artery to the descending aorta. So, Three shunts exist in the fetal circulation. 1. Ductus venosus. 2. Foramen ovale. 3. Ductus arteriosus. Let's now go through the blood flow in the diagram. Oxygen and nutrient materials are delivered, from the placenta to the fetus, by the single umbilical vein. The umbilical vein then divides into, the ductus venosus and the portal sinus. The ductus venosus, enters the inferior vena cava directly. And because it does not supply oxygen to the intervening tissues, it carries well oxygenated blood, directly to the heart. The portal sinus carries blood to the hepatic veins, primarily on the left side of the liver, and oxygen is extracted. Now, the relatively deoxygenated blood from the liver, flows into the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava also receives less oxygenated blood returning from the lower body. The oxygen content of blood, delivered to the heart from the inferior vena cava, is thus lower than the well oxygenated blood in the umbilical vein. Once blood enters the right atrium, the configuration of the upper interatrial septum, the crista dividens, preferentially shunts the well oxygenated blood from the medial side of the inferior vena cava, through the foramen ovale, into the left heart, and then to the heart and brain. While the less oxygenated blood, coursing along the lateral wall of the inferior vena cava, enters the right atrium, and is deflected through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle. The superior vena cava courses inferiorly and anteriorly as it enters the right atrium, ensuring that less well oxygenated blood returning from the brain and upper body also will be shunted directly to the right ventricle. As a result of this blood flow pattern, blood in the right ventricle is 15 to 20% less saturated than blood in the left ventricle. Almost 90% of blood pumped from the right ventricle is shunted through the ductus arteriosus to the descending aorta. Only about 10% goes to the lungs. Blood returns to the placenta through the two hypogastric arteries, which distally become the umbilical arteries. In the placenta, this blood picks up oxygen and other nutrients and is recirculated to the umbilical vein. After birth, four structures constrict or collapse. 1. The umbilical vessels, umbilical arteries become the umbilical ligaments, whereas the intraabdominal remnants of the umbilical vein form the ligamentum teres. 2. The ductus arteriosus. 3. The foramen ovale, and 4. The ductus venosus constricts and closes, resulting in the formation of the ligamentum venosum. This concludes our tutorial today. Thank you for watching.